Yeah, I basically what I do is I help people, um, what I call soul tuning. They t- attune them to their soul essence, their unique soul vibration, so they really know who they are on that deep inner level. So they really know who they are on that deep inner level, consciously, not in a vague way. And then we clear things on an energetic level that are not in alignment with that so that they can stop self-sabotaging or stop feeling blocked in their creative flow or just being a human being in relationships, you know, so, so we can go from just struggling and survive, barely surviving all the time to really thriving, being in the flow of, of life. We inherit so much of our um, energetic patterns that we keep living out over and over in life unconsciously because they're in our blind spots, but we inherit them from ancestors that, you know, they're passed down. And we don't even realize that, you know, we're carrying around depression from generations long ago, that people that actually went through great suffering during war or famine or, you know, right. these are not our issues, but we, but we believe that they are because we, they're in our blind spots. We don't, and they're, you know, these are universal principles. I spent so many years trying to learn and understand these universal principles of life, not just understanding them, but testing them in my own life to really see that I can believe them where the rubber meets the road. And when I got to a place in myself where I realized, you know what, this is real. I wanted to share it with people. And that's how I created The Awakened Artist over, over a handful of years. To, um, to, you know, we're at a time in the world where we need to, to really come together um, right. We're at a, at, a, at a shift in, in evolution, and it's not about, you know, uh, individuals anymore. It's about community, collaboration. And so as artists, we have to come together in community, and that's a lot of what The Awakened Artist is about, coming together, healing the healer, healing ourselves, being responsible, but then coming together as a community of awakened artists to use our art. It's what I call a love revolution of transformational art, entertainment, and media language that everyone speaks I don't care what culture you're from you know what love is and um, we are um, in deep need of returning that vibration of love and compassion to our planet right now for ourselves and each other when you get involved with the community which is starting to expand now that starts to be the process of going through those what, what we let unravel into a depression that process speeds up so that we can move through these moments faster with the support of each other you know creatively we'll start expanding this into our art into our creations and we don't have to prey on each other's dark sides with our art you know to be cool or to write a song that people will like because yeah it's edgy you know we'll actually start speaking more from the, the part of our spirits that people want to be inspired about, but they don't know how to access it. Um, This work for me is really about bringing spirit and body together, merging them. So so that we really become embodied spirits. You know, you hear that cliche, we're we're spiritual beings um, having a human or physical experience. But so, so this is about, to me, it's about merging being embodied spirits so we can really use our lives, use our bodies to bring into this physical material world an experience of heaven on earth, an experience of godliness, of spirituality, of soul um, enlightenment. And that's what great art does. When we go to concerts or we go to films or an art gallery or read a great book, that's what we're experiencing, you know? And that's why art is powerful. People are there, but they feel so alone and isolated. We just have to start to come together and merge our energy together so that they can understand how to start to move through and heal these things. Um, So I think it'll help them be empowered to not take things personally and to really start using the principles more effectively in their lives. Looking at themselves and their lives and their artistry through a new lens where they're empowered and not disempowered. The more we do this work, the more we realize our blind spots are treasure troves. That's where we're going to find out everything we need to know in order to 
move forward, to expand ourselves. We make this assumption <clears throat> that what's in our blind spot, in, in our shadow, is bad. But it's not. It's just things that, so when we're really small, from infancy to seven, eight years old, we're learning how to be in the world, how to relate with the world, with the people in our lives, the people we're dependent on, you know, our caretakers, our family members, or our, our guardians. And if we say or do something that we're, we're so intuitive as small children, if we feel that energy in them sort of, you know, their spine goes up or their voice gets tense or they raise their hand to us or worse, you know, we see something more physically violent, um, we, we know, uh-oh, that wasn't a good thing to do or say. So now we know if we want to survive, we better not do X, Y, Z. So we hide it from ourselves, we lie to ourselves, we shove it all into our blind spots, into our shadows, but that's who we really are. And it wasn't us that had the issue, it was the people around us that had their own wounds, unhealed wounds, that um, they projected onto us and they said, if you go there, you're going you're to make me mad as if we have that kind of control over people. And so we learn to not go there as small children. And then we never really look at that until we're adult, ho hopefully. And you know, I want to I want to add something. It's not even necessarily that it's inherently good. It just is what it is. And depending on your personal belief system, if you believe that we're all here as um, expressions of source energy, what some people call God or source energy or the divine intelligence of life itself, nature, you believe that we're all here for that. Well, would you look at a tree and say, that's a bad tree? No, you wouldn't look at a dog or, or a, a beautiful rose and say, that's a bad rose. But we put these judgments, life in itself, the life force energy in itself is neutral. We put the meaning into it. We say it's either good or bad, right or wrong. And then we cling on to that for our survival. And that's why it becomes survival of the fittest, where we want to have the good stuff because we believe this lie. It's a lie. It's a, separa it's a lie of separation that we're not all one, that we're not all part of the source energy of life, the goodness, the inherent goodness, godness of life. That's the lie. Because unless you had been fortunate, which I don't really know anybody who was this fortunate, to grow up in an environment that was 100% safe 100% of the time, where you could be yourself and never be um, criticized or mirrored back to or projected onto stuff that was untrue. Um, you know, that's just, we're just little um, machines that soak up the meaning of things and we misinterpret it all when we're small. It's a universal, unified field of energy that we're just expanding toward either the light or the shadow. What we focus on is what we build momentum toward. And if we focus on our worries and our problems, guess what? We build a lot of momentum toward those problems. If we focus on what we want, like you said, the merging of commerce and art, we focus on that and we see that as a positive thing, then we, then we create momentum toward that. There's a parable, which, um, which wolf will you see? The, the son asked the father or the grandfather, you know, there's two wolves. And, um, I don't remember the whole parable, you can Google it, but it's really powerful and you know, one is out to get you and one is the good wolf and you know, which one is, which one's going to win and, and the grandfather says, whichever wolf you feed. I have a page on Facebook, you can just go on Facebook and search The Awakened Artist or you can do facebook.com slash The Awakened Artist and it's a page and you can interact on there. Um, I don't want it to be like self-promotion or come to my gig kind of thing. That's not what it's about. It's about sharing your process as an artist, really. So if you join the um, membership circle, which is literally less than a dollar a day, it's $28 a month to have two live calls with me plus the recorded playbacks and the Facebook group. People will be put into a private Facebook group, not a page. It's a group where nobody else can see the post except the people in the group. Um, and 
We can talk about everything and anything. I have a contact page there for people to post all their contact information and share about themselves so they can get to know each other, people from all around the world. I want to see people collaborating, musicians coming together with um, photographers and filmmakers and authors. And the Awakened Artists is what I, what I want people to do is to, is to be able to reconnect them again so that you're back in the flow, connected to the world with your art. And that's where the, the, the finances will start to flow. Um, two other things I want to say. Yes, this is for artists creative spirit so if, if somebody feels like wow I'm not really an artist I I had a, a woman take the course who is uh, um, in her 70s a retired nurse midwife and she's not an artist in her mind um, but she got as much out of the course as any so-called artist that I know of in fact she's gonna write a book now your life is your blank canvas. Your life is your masterpiece. You are the painter. For people who want to live from the creative spirit of life, that's what I would say. And the creative spirit is, by nature, free, peaceful, loving, kind, beautiful. I've had an acceleration of growth just from my friends having gone through your course with you um, or in the process of, I've, we've had so much growth, my friends and I. We're better people. Yeah. And, and if I had just right. gone through your course and not connected with them, I don't think that I, I would, I, I got a whole other level of growth. So that's what this group is about, is really that's connecting right. these people. The community aspect. And then the other thing I wanted to add in that regard is on my website, I have a tab called community. And when people start doing the work, whether they do the coaching with me or the membership circle or they do the course, um, and they start applying the work where they've done a project in the past where they're like, yeah, this was exactly what The Awakened Artist is all about. I want them to share that project with me, share that work with me, and I'll post it on that page, on my community page, so that people can get inspired and get ideas of their own. To um... You inspired this magazine. You t completely oh. inspired it. You gave it your blessing. and. Um, so we're so excited to report on this good news and I'd like to even, you know, throughout the year if you feel like you want to drop in and, and, and mention something or, or anything like that, I'd love to be able to interview it. I mean, I'm just starting on this magazine. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm inspired. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah, I'd love to. I could be I'm happy once a month or whenever you want to do a piece to share what we're up to in The Awakened Arts because... I'm an avid um, world watcher. I pay attention to what's going on in the news. And then what I do is I fill myself with light and I say, instead of being afraid of what's going on in the world, I say, well, how am I going to be a vessel of healing and light so that um, we can release the, you know, the troubles of the world and really transmute them into goodness? Miracle of my